If the Lord pours into you his love, it's because you're pouring out love and forgiveness, and that you will petition him and you believe in his resolve. But I must warn you, a lot of Christians do not believe this way. They will, in fact, they, they believe in forcing, utilizing the rule of force upon a great many. The Christian, by the title, but in their actions, are going to be far away from the ways of Christ. Those of you who are true to the faith, men, listen to me. You know what it means? You're going to have to assume responsibility of your households. You're going to have to assume it and not blame another soul in your household. You know, I was in prayer the other day, and it was strange because I did see a lot of men blaming their wives for quite a bit. Christian men, that is not the way. That bothered me. That really bothered me. Um, that's not the way. And, and you wives, it's not the way to blame your husbands for anything either. But you've got to come together with one heart. You've got to find the common ground in the gospel and go forward with the gospel, understanding that everything else is a flesh and begin to grow together and be one unit. Uh, because if you don't, there are going to be severe repercussions. See, you're in the days of reaping, yes. But of what reaping will you partake of? What is coming back to you? You don't want to be one of those who just stomped on the heart of somebody else. You don't want that in your life. In fact, you don't want to be one of those who has inflicted anything upon anybody. Now are the days of repentance. Repentance before the permanent days come forward. Once they begin, they will not let up. It'll be like a hailstorm that gets worse and worse. Day by day, worse and worse. And as soon as you think you have an, an area where it clears up, where you can rest, where you can just take a breath, that's when the air is going to be poison. And In other words, I'm telling you, there are going to be no breaks in this. It's going to stretch many of us out to the length of our stamina and beyond. And you don't want to be in a position where you're still operating with worldly ways. Our Father, he's already let us know he is disgusted with worldly ways. If we have those ways in us, we put ourselves at risk, great risk. And if you fall into the hands of the Lord for immediate correction, woe unto you. Better that mercy and grace work its way over time in your life than for you to fall into the hands of the Lord for immediate correction. Because that will cost you your life and everything about your life. Better you do things in your freedom than have to be forced. Because the days are coming. They approach without warning. There is no getting ready, because right now where you are is where you are. But in this moment, there are some things that can be righted. There are some things that can be corrected. And I have to say this again, judgment starts in the house of God, not the world. If you see a trouble in the world, that's not going to be judgment. That's just simply chaos manifesting itself. No, judgment will start among us. My question to you is, are you truly prepared for this? Or have you been deceiving yourselves or anybody else? It's a walk of faith. We're not to walk by the flesh anymore. Not to be moved by emotions and then respond and do everything emotionally. No, but to move by faith, which is by the word of God. Not by the rules of the word of God. But by grace and mercy that was established in Jesus Christ, given to mankind that he may get his life right. That means to practice forgiveness. Not to hold grudges. Not to point a finger and blame. Those who blame during this time, they'll be blamed by their enemy. And when the enemy comes, he will be merciful to those who have bestowed mercy. The Lord will always have it so. But to those who showed no mercy, even to their own households, 
They will be given no merciful time at all, and suffering will ensue. Even though you are a believer, you are constantly sowing seeds. Only those things we repent of will we ever escape the reaping of. But if you're in denial, then you're not repenting. And if you're not repenting, it's coming straight for you. Couples, don't blame one another another day. Seek common ground, bound in Christ, built in love, and go forward. And do so quickly. Put those differences aside. They don't add to life. A storm is coming. My question to you is, are you truly prepared for it? Conventional things will not deliver you from the winds of the storm, nor the weight of the hail. A structure will not protect you from the rains that come this time. To be prepared spiritually, in truth, is to be prepared. To be wise is the way to be. But to still contend with hostilities and angers, you will draw unto yourself darkness full, full of anger, violence, and you'll draw wrath upon your own head. And these are going to be sad days in this respect. You're going to talk to certain people because you love them. And they will not listen and you will see what happens. You'll see God's principles in action. And it's not something to jump for joy about. But it's almost like a day of mourning. Because how much time have we been given? Not one of us can say we've not been given enough time. Not one of us. Now, the Lord is merciful, yes, and he has been merciful. But there was always coming a time where we would reap. And I'll say it again. If you repent, those things you have sown into the earth, the Father remembers no more. You cannot reap of something the Father got rid of. But in those things we sit in denial over, we will reap. For the most part, it begins with blame. Certainly in the house of the Lord, it begins with blame. If you have something you blame on somebody else, my humble advice to you is to assume responsibility and move forward. And when I say move forward, that means totally forgive that situation. Do not seek anything out of it, but be the one that forgives the entirety of the situation. Never bring it up again. Refuse to bring it up again. And place it under the blood. By doing so, you place yourself within Christ, utilizing his ways. Do not allow politics into your households. Don't do it. Don't let differences of opinions break the bond that your father has blessed to be upon you. And that's called your family. Let nothing enter into the gates of your family that is unholy. And no violence will find you. Violence is not concern. Violence is stirred up by entities. Entities that can get through inside of a human being, that's where they're going. If you're covered by the blood, they may not enter you because you're already occupied. They want nothing to do with you. Just as that demon in the times of old wanting nothing, he wanted nothing to do with Christ. I want you to keep in mind, Jesus said that the world hated him. But did you notice the demons ran from him? Did you notice that? Those who laid hands on him was not the devil. It was man. It was the world. 
It was the established way of the world that caused men to be that way. Servants of the world carry out those things of the world. But what man is about to face is a manifestation of a slew of demonic entities of which they have no protection. Ancient ones coming right back here again. They will both rise and fall straight to this planet. They'll rise out of the earth and come from the heavens at the same time. Man will have to deal with that, but man has no defense. And it's a big woe to those who have no defense. For this, for a long time, man has not been fighting demons. Man has not been fighting these. Man has been fighting his own mind, his own imagination, his own evil imagination. For there were days coming that these things would be given space, and that space is called the kingdom of the beast. There is no beast without his army. And you know where the army comes from. The army is not some conventional army, but a true manifestation of things that have not entered into your mind yet. Man has no defense against it. But you do. Just as they wanted nothing to do with Christ. They cannot penetrate the blood of the Lamb. The Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. They will not touch the saints. It is not given to them to touch the saints. What you've been dealing with is man's emotions, man's folly and foolishness, the greed, their lust for power, for money, for position. That's what you've been dealing with. As far as darkness is concerned, it is not given to touch you. Those things that come out of the bottomless pit, it is not given to them to touch any of the saints. That's why it is said to them, don't hurt any green tree or anything green and do not touch those with the seal of God in the forehead. It's not given to them to do anything to the righteous. But to the unjust, there will be no help. These are great days of sorrow. Not for you, but for those who chose the world and for those who chose to be servants of the world. And you're about to see the undoing of some things. I know nobody wants to hear it, but you cannot begin and make a declaration on the word of God, but then end up on Satan's side. You cannot begin by way of a blessing and hope to continue without the one who blessed you. And that's what this country has done. We target our own people. We are okay with suffering. You don't think that comes with consequences. Every word God spoke is truth. And every word Jesus spoke was certified by truth. And the consequence was always coming. But the Lord is merciful and full of grace. Always hopeful for us that we would change. But we know by reading prophecy, there came a time when that time given to man to change was up. And the storm came. A storm unlike any other. We sit at the starting line of those storms. We've seen no trouble in the earth yet, but we're about to. World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, even the Civil Wars, that was not trouble. We're about to know what trouble is. We're about to see what darkness is. Man is not seeing darkness. God is clear about this, but we're about to see darkness for the first time. 
The days that will be are the days that will never be again. No other time in the history of man or earth compares to the days we live in. And they will not ever be again. That makes this a one-time deal. That makes us a creation spectacle. You know what that means? All of creation will witness what's about to happen here. All eyes are on you. The question will be, what did you petition for? Did you petition for God's way or your way? Did you seek the wisdom of the Lord and implement his ways in the earth, keeping with the standards of Jesus Christ and his gospel? Or did you seek strange garments that you may establish a different rule set on the earth? Or did you join with the world? Those will be the questions. Did we give ourselves excuses so that we could perform sin? How about you directly? Will you try to be invisible among the people in the days to come by yelling with them, targeting other folks with them? You're about to see racism. You're about to see strong, deep party lines divided. You're about to see a split of cultures Big time. You're about to see the fruit of a tree no one saw coming. And it's damaging fruit. See, if something is not done the Lord's way, Satan usurps it. And if Satan usurps anything, he corrupts it. And because it's corrupted, it produces no good fruit. This you will see. That's why I don't stand by worldly things, and I will not stand by them. But I will seek the ways of the kingdom that Jesus established. I don't care what that cost is. That is the only righteous kingdom I'm aware of. Your choices are extremely important. Or never let Satan somehow make you think you're powerless. The Lord did not place his hands upon those in the world. He placed his hands upon you. He imparted the blessings unto you. You are the ones that are deemed the righteousness of Christ. Did you hear that term? You are the righteousness of of Christ. That's a title given to you because you accept the Messiah. You are the righteousness of Christ and that comes with abilities and with gifts and with the right of passage to petition the Father directly for things you see in the earth. But have you taken that route? Or did you take another route? The worldly route? All these things, starting your homes, establish them quickly in your homes. Once you establish those ways in your homes, everyone in that home will be in freedom. The spirit of darkness will leave. But I can almost tell you that the spirit of darkness is in many of your homes. It's up to you to get it out, the believer not putting it off to somebody else. You're the one with the heart to petition the Father, so petition the Father. And have your strength renewed while you wait upon the Lord for your solution for that house, and be consistent with your forgiveness. And have an actual hope for those in the household, even if they strongly disagree with everything you do. Have a hope for them, as your Father had a hope for you. Never forget the great mercy of the Father upon your lives. All of us, all of us, today 
We could have been in circumstances a thousand times worse than what they are right now. For those of you in health, you could be on your deathbed and they could be giving you the wrong medication. You sit there and suffer in pain and nobody would know it. You know how many times that happens in the USA on a consistent basis? People in hospitals, they're essentially neutralized, agonizing in pain because they gave them the wrong medication. But they cannot move, nor can they yell. And they sit there day after day for weeks and sometimes months. And when they do awake, they're in a crazed state because they have dealt with what nobody else has dealt with. You could be one of those people. How about the people that continue to have surgery? They put them to sleep, but they don't numb the pain. And the person experiences all of the cutting in the flesh, the extraction of the organs and everything else. And they're wide awake. They just cannot move anything. You could be one of those people, but you're not. Is my point getting across? You could be in worse shape right now, but you're not. If you're hospitalized right now, but you're on a computer, you're doing a whole lot better than the ones who are not on a computer because they can't be on a computer. You're still blessed. No matter what your state is, you're blessed. Have you considered that? See, once you consider that, that's when the heart becomes thankful. When your heart becomes thankful, you're not worn out anymore. We know the truth about being worn out. We only get worn out when we try to establish our will. And it doesn't work that way. Then we get worn out because we can't establish our will. We can't establish our outcome. We're not where we want to be. Relinquish. Let go of all of that. Let's turn our whole faces unto the Messiah. And all ye meek of the earth who have wrought his judgment in the earth, hide yourselves in him, which is to seek him with all of what you are, that you're covered by the blood. Because when the manifestations begin, your mind will not grasp it. And if you're left out there, your flesh won't survive it. Yet you won't die. My prayer is that you do not take part in what they're going to do out in the streets against their fellow man, against their brothers and sisters, against their own children. It won't be patriotic. It'll be divisive. It'll be against the very foundation of which many men lay down their lives for, for sustaining freedom called democracy to exist. Many people lay down their lives for it. Many people risked everything for it. Many people right now are injured for that very cause. And they're throwing it away internally. And as you see it, my prayer is that you're not moved by the world, but moved with great compassion and righteousness, petitioning the Father for his way to be established. For the innocent, for the small ones, the day after Christmas, there were a countless number of children who became homeless for the first time the day after Christmas. These days are tough, even on me, because I don't seek enjoyment, not so long as I can think about them. And nobody can tell me not to think about them. Because I will always think about them. Aren't they us? Aren't we them? Because the same heart against them is called the world, isn't it, against you? The only difference is you're blessed not to be in their positions, or is it a blessing? 
Because if you don't see it as a blessing, if you're not thankful for everything that you have in your life, even if it's hardly nothing, even that little bit can be taken away. And how many more wake-up calls will it take for people to take hold of the gospel and truth and not let it go anymore? Because a very different manifestation will come. And the suffering it leaves in its wake, we have not seen the like. That's what the Word teaches us. But it starts in your households, in your individual households. Even if you're by yourself, it begins with you. That you not blame another soul again. That you assume all responsibility for your entire life. That you forgive all so that you can be in right standing. So that your petition be heard. Because if you have unforgiveness within you, your petition will not be heard. Because you stand in an unforgiven state. And for those of you who have anything against anybody... Do you not know for all this time your Father in Heaven has not forgiven you? That means you're in a position of danger. And if you should lose your life, or you have something against somebody else not truly releasing them, you will not go where the Father is. The apostles reiterated this. God gave it to his prophets to speak about this in the Old Testament, that we shouldn't deceive ourselves. It begins with you, with releasing everybody and assuming all responsibility, especially the men in these households. Assume all responsibility. It does not matter what the other person does, men. It matters what you do in your father's view. Your whole life is transparent. Blessings will come or not come based upon the believer in that house. Assume responsibility. Don't sit around blaming and moping because things are not going right. But make the change tonight. You're a citizen of the kingdom of the living God. Not some throwaway in the world. So stand in that position, forgiving everybody. Even when they talk a lot of stuff, still forgive them. And understand why you're forgiving them. Because the Lord surely forgave you. He surely forgave me. Mm. Folks, don't lose yourselves in tomorrow. Now, that brings us to tomorrow. Tomorrow's one of those days that will be, well, one of those uncertain days. A lot of anxiety build up. You don't have to have that anxiety. You really don't. It's, it's very simple. If you seek for the ways of Christ to be established, how then can you have anxiety? You can only have anxieties when you're frightened or when you want your way to be established. Don't seek your way. Don't be frightened. But seek the way of the Lord that will be established. And understand that the Lord is not going to fail. And it's impossible for the Father to fail. But all things that are happening, he already, had, he already gave it to us. This is a process of deliverance. And in these days, where great many things are made manifest, all of us will choose. We will choose in truth. Because the truth of us is soon to surface. Why do you think so many people are no longer afraid to hide themselves when they turn out to be either homosexuals or whatever they are? They're not afraid to hide themselves anymore. Have you noticed that day by day, people are no longer afraid to show what they really are on the inside. Have you noticed that? They're not afraid. 
You shouldn't be either. But in so doing, you need to understand something. All, every single last one of us are sinners saved by grace. You were the same ones you criticize. You were the same ones you speak against. Don't waste your energy criticizing or speaking against them, but petition to the Lord that his will be done in the earth and be a part of God's will. Because whether you're ready or not this time, the storm will come. And the beast will be given space to accomplish what he is created to accomplish. He has been silenced for many years. He has been hidden and held back. But iniquity has been abounding in the hearts of men. Purge it from yours. Purge it by confessing your iniquity unto the Lord. We purge by telling the Lord all about our iniquity. And then turning away from it. Let the Lord be your witness in that confession. We confess our faults one to another. But we acknowledge our iniquity before Jesus of Nazareth. There's a difference. A fault is something that you, it's just impossible for you to maintain. You're no good at it. We acknowledge our iniquity before Christ. We confess our faults one to another. A fault is different than an iniquity. That's why it's called a fault. Now it's time to focus on Christ. You get to see who is who. And it will get to the best of us. But it's the Lord's strength we operate by. My strength, my strength would fail. Your strength would fail. But the Lord's strength does not fail. And the scripture truly says, in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. It does not say when we are weak, he is strong. That's not what it says. It says, in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Do you know why? Do you know why in our weakness his strength is made perfect? First of all, his strength is always perfect. It need not be made perfect, it's always perfect, but that word made implies it manifests. In our weakness, his strength manifests. How so? Because in our weakness, when we can't do anything else, we have no choice but to watch. Normally in those times, we have exhausted everything we know how to do. We don't know how to do anything else. And in those times, when we know that we're not doing it, and something begins to happen, we assume no credit for it. But one of the first things we say is, that is the Lord. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. It's made perfect because we're not putting our fingers into it. We're not corrupting it. We're exhausted. When you're exhausted, then the Lord works and his work is perfect. Then you witness perfect strength and you acknowledge that perfect strength. You guys ever fix something, but you really didn't fix it. You just kind of held it and started working. And somebody said, how'd you do that? And you were tempted to take credit for it. Anybody ever do that? They couldn't get it to work. They give it to you. All of a sudden, you just put it in your hands and it begins to work again. They look at you and say, how did you fix that so fast? And you're tempted to take credit. But you yourselves know you did nothing. You didn't do a thing. You just held it and it began to work. It's like witnessing. The strength of the Lord, when you have exhausted all of yours, you can do nothing but witness the miracle. But why do we have to wait until we exhaust everything we know how to do? 
See, because there's a growth part to that scripture. For us to stop doing things our way. When we do things our way, we only take up time. The Lord has an established way he does things. If we would hear him, we wouldn't have to exhaust ourselves. See, part of that is acknowledgement of us, where we have no choice but to acknowledge. And the other part is, why are we still doing it the flesh way, when the spiritual way does not fail? Tomorrow, you're going to see a great many people do things the flesh way. It won't work. It's only going to compound the problem. But you're the ones who are the called in the earth. If you seek your father, that is the spiritual way, and he will be your guidance. He will instruct you. The question you have to ask yourself is, do you really trust the resolve of Christ? See, a lot of people say, well, the Lord gave it to us to be the, to do this and to do that. No, no, he didn't. He didn't do half of what most people claim. A lot of people claim that because they will not wait upon the Lord. We know that patience is a virtue. We know that we must have patience in our lives. In other words, we end up waiting on the Lord in a lot of things. But it's amazing how we're not touched during the wait period. That doesn't mean be lazy. That doesn't mean sit there and do nothing either. Because we are to carry out the instruction the Lord gave us already. But in those special requests, we wait for the guidance of the Lord that the work may be perfected. But if you want credit for doing something, you will not wait upon the Lord. That's one of the biggest problems. To want credit means you may want somebody else to see you doing something so that they can observe you doing something. That's wanting credit for yourselves. See, you have forgotten that when the Lord gives you something to do, he also instructs others to watch you. You don't know who they are. You haven't met them yet, but they're watching you. I'm telling you, they're watching you. Everything you do, every decision you make, they're watching you. And if you choose righteousness, you're going to affect the souls of those who watch you. Because in their eyes, right, they're looking at you and you're showing them your direct representation of the Lord in their eyes. Every time you go off and do something by yourself and go into a fit of rage, whatever you do, do you know what you're doing? You're misrepresenting the Lord Jesus to them. If you run around and people know you're a Christian, they expect to see the standards of the Lord in you. But if you don't uphold them, you're authorizing those people to act in a horrible way. So guess what? You've been teaching people all this time, too. You may not know it, but you've been teaching people your entire life. And they're still watching. Think about what you're teaching them. There is nothing you can hide from them. All of you are witnesses. There's somebody in your life that knows all about you. They know everything you do. And it seems like you can't hide yourself. They find out everything about you. Men, are you listening to me? They're meant to see you. Because you're meant to be an influence upon them that they may change what they're doing. But if you act out of flesh, what are you demonstrating to them? Yes, they're nosy. Yes, they eventually find out this, that, and the other. They are supposed to. Because you're the ambassador. Of Christ in the earth. Are you not? That means you've had a ministry all this time that you didn't know about. It's called life. So what you do in life truly matters to the soul of somebody else. Because the Lord made it so. Now that you know that, keep that in your mind. 
Because every time you willingly fall, you're authorizing corruption to them. Every time you start giving up, you're authorizing darkness for them. Never once in the word of God did he tell us we were going to give up. Nope, he never said that. He encouraged us to stay faithful, to endure until the end. And if he gave us that challenge, he also gave us the ability to do it. So that if we start giving in, then that means we're believing in darkness to start giving in. Jesus would never tell us to do something he did not enable us to do. So he's given us the strength, the mind, and the stamina to do whatever he called us to do. We just need to do it. I hope you remember that. Because the true ministry that you have is on the record and off the record. They see everything. There is no moment when you can just cut loose. There should never be a moment when you could cut loose because the Lord has already delivered you. Why would you need to cut loose from the spirit to go back to the flesh? That makes no sense. The truth is, we need to fully walk into those spiritual things. I know a lot of people don't understand what that is because of theocracies in the world and theologies. I understand that. We'll cover that. We have to cover it because the knowledge drop must take place. See, the world's going to do a knowledge drop. But their way of explaining things is highly deceitful. There's a person I'll be talking with you guys will hear. This person is well known, but you'll hear it. And we're going to discuss a couple things that happened in the past. The only reason I'm doing this, so you guys really hear it, from where you thought you would never hear it. So your jaw kind of opens up. You're very used to me. So it takes another person to speak their side of that story so that you guys listen. Do you know why? Because things that seem so fascinating are in fact deadly. Not only deadly to the flesh, but they are corruption to the soul and you need to know the difference. When the world gets a hold of it, they're going to worship it. That's their reason. It's not for truth. It's for positioning. Well, they have their orders, and I have mine. But the Lord said he would not have a signal concerning the devices of the enemy. That's what the Lord said. He would not have us ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. And since he said that, well then, you will know the enemy's plots and plans, and you will not fall by them. You will see the truth of them. But I'm telling you now, it takes a special person to explain to another person in truth during that time what another will see. You've never faced people whose souls are drawn by these things. You've only faced people whose minds are drawn by things, who may get a good feeling, but you have never met or never been in a situation where the soul was drawn. I'm telling you, that's a different situation. And your words don't count to anybody. If the soul is drawn, you have to work from a higher standard. The standard of Christ, the standard he really gave us. Not the standard we made to ourselves just to get by. And that means we have to stand with integrity of the word. Great integrity. But 
If we care about the gospel, we will stand in that integrity, and we will not resist the Lord's hand upon us to grow us, because all of this is absolute deliverance. All of it is.